I, I think you all see why Jeff is my uh, go-to guy for, for open source software. So um, before I introduce our next speaker, though, I do want to take a minute and thank our sponsors, So, who, who without whom this would not be happening today. Uh, first and foremost, the San Diego Foundation, uh, who, who hooked us up with this very nice room. Uh, second, uh, and, and, and maybe actually slightly more importantly, Code for America, who's paying for the beer. Um, and, and, and finally, uh, Voice of San Diego, who's also helping us put this on today and help with some of the marketing of the event. Um, so when I was talking to Jeff about this and talking about open source software, he mentioned to me how the Department of Defense was using it more and more and told me a little bit about it and I was pretty am amazed. And then he said, I know a guy who can tell you even more. So that's our next speaker. Uh, Major James Nuschel, um, who is going to be, who works for uh, Marine and uh, works in the military. You know what? I'll just let him tell you. <laughs> James. All right. Good evening. I only have one slide, so this will take 20 seconds. <laughs> I, I'm in the Marines. I'm a major in the Marine Corps. I, I didn't know if I should wear my uniform. I probably should have. I actually joined the military, obviously, because I don't know how to dress myself. <laughs> so this is a great opportunity. I'm really glad I got to go after Jeff, because he already explained to you the positive aspects of, of military or, or of open source software. So probably about 10 years ago, I got a degree in uh, computer science through the Naval Postgraduate School and really trying to fix all of our broken software. And I was complaining to some, to some other developers in the industry, and they suggested that, that we start this thing. So I, I actually have permission by everyone else to call myself the mill part of mill OSS, at least in the beginning. I would love it if the DOD was, in fact, totally going open source, but we kind of aren't. The reason I only have one slide is I have Microsoft Exchange at work, and it doesn't really work with everything else. So I didn't get the email that said I needed 20 slides in 20 seconds. So you only get one slide. But it's, it says down here that the Navy's newest warship is powered by Linux, which is good because some of them are still on Windows 98. And, uh, and a lot of UAV programs and everything else. So one of, one of the things I would just like to share before I get pulled off is the, what's the best model for the DOD? What's the best model for government? And I'll just, I'll try with a, with a vignette for my son, who I, first of all, I didn't think he listened to me at all. But he comes home, he says, Dad, I've been hearing you talk about Linux and all this open source stuff. So I went into the IT guy at school and I said, and I asked him if he has, if he knows anything about Linux. And the guy said, well, really, I, he didn't know. The IT guy at school really didn't know. And he said, it's not my job anyway. I just do this Microsoft stuff. That would be a district problem. Because you know, my son, he wants to be a motivator. He wants to go ahead and save money. He doesn't want the people who can't afford a $300 operating system at home. He wants to be able to give them a computer and have them be able to download the, the software for free. And because he heard my diatribes about, what do you mean you have to use PowerPoint. Why can't you use Open Office? What do you mean you have to use Word? Why can't you use the open source version? What if the, what about the kids who can't afford it? So you know he tried to he tried to fight that battle, but then he just saw this giant obstacle, which is it goes all the way to the top. Really, there's a political decision somebody made somewhere to buy Microsoft, and now everybody has to use it, and that's all we're teaching our kids to use. So that's just throwing that out. Just be aware of of, of in government and in DoD. Someone makes a decision like, of course we're going to buy Microsoft because that's the best one. Ah, you're, you're, you might be dooming people, everybody, all the way across the spectrum to, uh, to being limited to that. And the, the, the second and third order effects, especially in the DoD, are, are immense. And, and it's, it's very interesting. The second problem besides that is within large organizations, you have rice bowls. You have people who control certain types of resources. Just in a meeting uh, two, two hours ago, and I had a guy, he said, oh, I got this great piece of software. The Army already has it, so you own it. And I says, no, no, no. That's why I helped start this. Because if the Army buys something, they, even if they develop them, it themselves, like it's government-owned software, if they don't put an open source license on it, they don't have to give it to the Marines. 
they'll give it to the Marines, but they'll want it, they'll still want to be the developers, this government organization over here. They still want to own and control the software. And they'll make an argument like version control or something else. The Marines, they want the software, but they want it to be green, not dark green, or they want it to be blue and green. They want it to look a little different. They want it to act a little different. Maybe not retreat as quickly. No, sorry. <laughs> so, sorry, if anybody in the Army gets a little friendly. <laughs> Inner service robbery. No, so, so everyone's going to want to change their software. But the, the closed source model, even inside the organization, prevents them from doing that. So that's one of the main reasons I did this. The, the third big thing, which is related, is the, is the concept that he alluded to. It has to do with collaborative software development. Essentially, you don't go out and just write your own piece of software and hope everyone's going to use your version of software. And the only way it's going to work with other people is if everybody buys your version. It doesn't really work that way. Nowadays, everybody has to make a piece of software that's following standards. Two minutes, all right, good to go. It's following standards. And the way that you can be guaranteed to do that is if you're using open source. So what you have when you, when, when you evaluate a good product is you would find out how many people are depending on this product. How many corporations, countries, uh, organizations really need this product to work. They need it to be secure. They're going to put money and resources against it. Because essentially, Red Hat, for example, the whole world is their developer. They don't develop any software. They just put it together in a package for you. So this is a good thing for the DOD and the government to do. That's the position of military open source software. I think I'm done. All right? <laughs>